you have it, you want to get diagnosed as early as possible in life so that you can eat a low copper diet because it can be fatal if it's not treated. What's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about copper toxicity. This was a highly requested video when I asked what you guys were interested in seeing. So I'm really excited to talk about this. I am not offering uh, specific advice for anybody. I suggest that you work with a practitioner and get something that's tailored for you. This is more so meant to create awareness. So I've got my computer over here, which I'm going to grab in just a moment and sort of go through my protocol that was assigned to me and share some of my test results. But I want to first talk about some of the causes of copper toxicity, then we'll chat about the symptoms, and then we can chat about how to um, improve copper toxicity. Some of the things that can cause it are number one, Wilson's disease. So Wilson's disease is a genetic issue where you just don't get rid of copper properly. And it is something that if you have it, you want to get diagnosed as early as possible in life so that you can eat a low copper diet because it can be fatal if it's not treated. And the symptoms are terrible if it's ongoing and untreated. Um, people will eventually, eventually just develop jaundice. The whites of their eyes will turn yellow and their liver can shut down. Your body just starts like filling up with copper and just doesn't function properly. Different minerals have like an emotional effect in our body. So magnesium, for example, is very calming. So people take magnesium to help them sleep. They take it for anxiety and just to relax. Copper is an excitatory mineral. So if you have an excess of copper in your body, you're like a live wire. So some of the other things that can cause it are um, eating a vegetarian or vegan diet for a long period of time. So vegetarian and vegan proteins are much higher in copper and much lower in zinc. And then animal proteins are typically higher in zinc and lower in copper, um, or just have more of a balance to them. Now, that is not the case for um, organ meats or often like different types of seafood and shellfish. Typically, you would want to be leaning towards like chicken breast or beef or things like that. Um, that is another way that people can get it, just long-term eating vegan and vegetarian. And if you are not producing enough of that copper binding protein, you're not excreting it, your body's going to start storing too much copper. Another thing that can cause it is just simply copper pipes. So if you have um, an older home, if you're renting an older place and the pipes in your home are copper, you are absorbing that through drinking, you're absorbing it through the shower, through bathing. You would want to get a filter to filter out the copper. I use a Berkey filter, I'm not saying it's the best filter, but um, it works well for me. And then another thing that can cause it is hormone levels. So there's two different parts to that. So um, having a copper IUD, just the copper itself that's getting put off by the IUD can in increase copper levels for people and in their bloodstream and can cause those symptoms. You can also get cop copper toxicity if you just have higher estrogen levels and if you're taking birth control. So whether you're taking you know, birth control that is non-hormone based or hormone based, it can affect your copper levels, which is very interesting. Um, copper and estrogen seem to rise together. So if you have higher copper levels, it can um, cause an increase in estrogen and then vice versa. Higher estrogen can increase copper. That is something that you would want to be aware of if you're taking birth control and, and maybe look into if you are experiencing any of the symptoms that I'm sharing. The other thing is not just the storage of the copper, but when you have too much copper in your bloodstream, it, it is an oxidant in your body. So there's like antioxidants, which are really good and they help to fight free radicals. Copper has the opposite effect. So it's just going to cause symptoms almost like fibromyalgia. Um, you can get pain in your muscles. You can um, have ADHD and insomnia and things like that because it's this like excitatory mineral in your body. Menstrual irregularities, high anxiety, depression, um, increase in ADHD and ADD symptoms, poor wound healing. They can have yeast and bacterial overgrowths from copper. And then it will affect the mood and neurotransmitters because it lowers dopamine and increases norepinephrine in the, in the brain, which is adrenaline. The symptoms that I was experiencing personally were uh, mood swings. I was experiencing hypoglycemia. I was having crazy headaches and body pain, almost like fibromyalgia where I couldn't exercise, I couldn't dance, I 
just felt super stiff and almost like I was like rusting from the inside and it was really scary. Mainly like the biggest thing that was super disruptive was just the mood swings. Like I, I couldn't get out of this fog, like I was having brain fog and I probably have ADD. Anybody who's ever dated me is like, yes, you have ADD. And it was significantly worse. The symptoms that I had were just way, way worse at that time. In the protocol that I was given, they kind of broke down, you know, here's the issues that you had. I did have slightly low vitamin D, which is kind of bizarre because I lived in Hawaii and was getting a decent amount of sun. So I was dealing with a little bit of low vitamin D, but not like super low, not enough to cause all of the symptoms. Um, and then my free copper levels were very high. Oh, something else that was happening too was I was having really bad um, melasma. So I was getting this sort of like, almost like coppery sheen to my skin when I would go in the sun. Like now I can go in the skin, sun and I just kind of freckle more so. And every once in a while I'll get like bigger spots, but I was getting like these big blocks of like brown on my cheeks. Um, which can also happen from hormone levels being higher too, like estrogen. Some people get that after they're um, pregnant, they'll have issues with melasma because of their hormones. So um, I imagine that the copper being high was raising my estrogen and then causing that melasma. The free copper is what you want to check um, for having an overload. So you test the uh, copper level in the blood, you test the copper binding protein, and then you see how much is free relative to that binding protein. And that's where you get a certain percentage. Um, so you want the percentage to be lower than 25%. And mine was just about 30%. So that was in the high range. I'm going to go through the supplements that were recommended to me. And I'll talk about what worked for me and what did not work for me. So it was recommended that I take biotin, vitamin C in a high dose. Vitamin C, taking that in high doses, apparently has the ability to block some absorption of copper. B2, a good methylated form of B12, zinc, magnesium, primrose oil, evening primro primrose oil, and um, molybdenum. <laughs> I never know how to pronounce that one. So those were the main things that were suggested for the copper, just like overall immune support. So the magnesium, vitamin C, molybdenum, um, and then B vitamins. That was what worked really well for me. I tried taking the amount of zinc that was recommended and I had horrible symptoms from it. And so I connected with the, um, my nutritional practitioner and she suggested just kind of playing around with it, finding the right spot and taking it out if necessary. So I ended up having to just remove it and just focus on eating higher zinc foods because supplementing with it was so bad. All of the symptoms that I had would just get even worse when I would supplement with zinc. And I found out that zinc can have a bit of a chelating effect. A chelator is something that attaches to a nutrient or toxin or um, you know something in your body. It basically attaches to that thing and helps to pull it out of the body. And if you have an optimized methylation and detoxif detoxification system, then you might not have trouble as it pulls it out of your body into the bloodstream and then tries to detoxify it. But if you have an issue with detoxifying your body in the first place, and then you overload your body with all of this stuff that you're trying to pull out of your system, then all that's just floating around in your bloodstream. Your body's like, ah, what do I do with it? And it just like sticks it back in different places and tries to, you know, get it out of the bloodstream because that's where it's really, really toxic and damaging to the body. Your body is trying to help you out by sticking these things in your liver and in your, you know, other tissues. And so I just found that I could not supplement with zinc at all. And it was interesting because I think that my brother probably also dealt with copper toxicity and that's probably what caused some of the health issues that he had. He was also eating a vegetarian and vegan diet and just like was so hardcore that he kind of refused to change his diet and even experiment when I was telling him what I was dealing with. Um, and so his symptoms just continued to get worse. And so I mentioned this to my dad recently as well, because he was supplementing with zinc and having these really weird symptoms. And I was like, dad, I think you might also have 
kind of high copper levels. I suggested to him to stop supplementing with zinc and he felt better within a few days. He was like, oh my goodness, like all the anxiety and like weird things that I was experiencing just kind of went away. I would caution anybody who is dealing with copper toxicity, just be really careful with supplementing with zinc because it could exacerbate your symptoms. So the B vitamins are gonna be really good and supportive for the detoxification. And if you do have methylation issues, making sure that you have pre-methylated B vitamins, I can link to the ones that I use down below in the description. Um, that's gonna be super important. And then that vitamin C helping to block the absorption. So I try to take liposomal vitamin C every day. And then I also, drink lemon water all the time too. Food wise, what was recommended was to basically not eat high copper foods. The list that I can just spout off from the top of my head uh, is basically legumes, nuts and seeds, beans, uh, chocolate, any sort of organ meats, any sort of like shellfish, oysters, that kind of stuff. You want to avoid that. Um, there's certain fruits like figs, stone fruits like peaches, nectarines, um, pears are also high, coconut, avocados, seed grains like quinoa can be higher in copper. Oh, tomato sauce, like processed tomato products, um, tomato paste, that was another thing. Potatoes, the skins on potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams um, with and without the skin are high. So when I eat potatoes, I always peel the skin. I will put a link in the description to the foundation for like Wilson's disease where they have a whole list of what foods are high in copper and not high in copper. So I basically just looked at that list and was like, okay, I can eat this, I can't eat that. You know, I didn't feel like I was suffering. I had a lot of foods that I could eat, but a lot of the foods that I loved, I, I had to now eat them in really, really small quantities. What I do now is I basically have like, one thing per day that might be like higher in copper and i try to basically not have anything else that day that is higher copper so if i'm gonna eat a bit of chocolate or something like i'm just eating like a very small amount of chocolate and then i'm not gonna eat other things that are higher in copper that day peanut butter i love peanut butter apparently peanut butter it's one of the lower copper legumes but still fairly high compared to other foods so if i'm gonna eat peanut butter i just have like one serving per day yeah figs <laughs> i love figs so much i could eat just like a basket of figs i will eat just like maybe three or four figs and then I'll have to like stop myself. So that's kind of how I manage it now. And I just make sure that I stay on top of these supplements and, um, you know, managing my diet, managing my stress too, and sleep definitely makes a big difference. It took me about a month to feel uh, like a pretty big difference. But then after like three months, I felt so different that I just was ecstatic I, I just couldn't believe how much better i felt if you guys have further questions i'm happy to get into more detail you know i just want to empower people to like look deeper into health issues that are going on because i went to multiple doctors um a nutritionist and it just really took me digging and digging and stumbling upon that podcast talking about adrenal fatigue and how it's actually copper toxicity Stumbling upon that podcast was the best thing that ever happened to me because I was able to find out this information finally. Yeah, so I'll, I'll link Samantha's information below if any of you are interested in working with her. I will link all the supplements that I take, the brands that I like below in the description. And then I will also link the list of high and low copper foods. But I encourage you guys to just, you know, take your health into your own hands and keep digging, keep searching for answers. In the next video coming up, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that have really helped me to combat winter dry skin. I am a naturally just dry person. I've always had kind of dry, itchy skin. And when I moved to Austin, especially being in air conditioning in the summer and then heat in the winter, my skin would get super dry. So there's two things that I have changed and added to my uh, protocol that have made a huge difference. So I'm excited to chat with you about them. But yeah, if you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you as a subscriber. No pressure though, you know, like some people you just want to float on by and then never see me again. That's totally cool. But if you want to see me again, then subscribe. My husband Grayson also is in videos sometimes with me too. And we talk about 
health and lifestyle stuff. In the coming months, we are going to be starting some of our preparation on our land for the build. So this year is really going to be focused on preparing our land because we have a property that is in the mountains and it's sloped. Anywho, there's going to be videos about that coming up in the next few months. And I'm excited to see you guys again soon. Alrighty, take care. Oh my goodness. I, I rambled so much.